quarterbacks lead all the conversations. But then Shefty reports that Saquon Barkley is going to Philadelphia. Three-year deal with the division rival Eagles worth up to $47 million. $26 million of that fully guaranteed. How good is Saquon Barkley? Well, I'm glad you asked. He is a true three-down back, efficient on the ground, efficient in the passing game, efficient in pass protection. He's averaged nearly 100 scrimmage yards per game since entering the league, despite the Giants having poor offensive line play in that time. And I say that being kind, and their quarterback play hasn't been spectacular either. So, Sheffy, that one really seemed to catch people off guard. Let's start there. Uh, I, I, I'm old enough to remember when running backs weren't worth any money. No one was going to pay them anything. In a, so how did this? How did Saquon wind up in Philadelphia? Well, Greeny, one of the biggest surprises of yesterday was how busy the running backs were and how in demand they were. And no running back was more in demand than Saquon Barkley, who finds the type of deal in Philadelphia that he never was able to get with the New York Giants. He had looked and talked to that team for years. The two sides tried over and over to work out a deal. And again, what the Giants and Saquon couldn't accomplish in a couple of years, Saquon and the Eagles accomplished in a couple of hours. And that is how much Philadelphia wanted to pry him loose from their division rival. That's how much they wanted to make him a part of their offense. Last year, they leaned on a committee of backs led by DeAndre Swift, who wound up yesterday in Chicago with the Bears. But I think the Eagles looked at Saquon Barkley as a player, a back, who could elevate this offense and be a true three-down weapon and catch the ball out of the backfield and make the types of plays that would return the Eagles to the type of success they had at the beginning of last season and the season before. And that's why they made the plunge that the Giants were unwilling to make the previous couple of seasons. Dan Orlovsky, tell me what he is in that offense. What does Saquon Barkley do for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense? Yeah, creates and attacks space and light, Greeny. Saquon Barkley's job in life as a New York Giant was always hard. It will never be easier than it will be in Philadelphia. If we think about Philadelphia's offense and the people that they have, the space that they're able to create with the A.J. Brown, a, da a Dallas Goddard, a Devontae Smith, Saquon has never felt that. Imagine this, the field being spread 53 and a third yards wide, and now he has all that area to work with. Last year, Greeny, there was one back in the NFL that was hit behind the line of scrimmage more than Saquon Barkley. It was Derrick Henry. Mm -hmm. Philadelphia Eagles create space at the offensive line. You know, when, when you're talking about getting the ball to a player and giving him room to go, Philadelphia's top five when it comes to changing the line of scrimmage. Saquon has never had the opportunity to get to the line of scrimmage and be like, oh, I haven't been hit yet. And so it completely transformed. And I think also, Greeny, you know, for a couple of years in Philadelphia, this was a plug-and-play offensive line. You could put any back back there, it felt like, and they were going to go get yards. Jason Kelsey's retired. It's not that offensive line mm. anymore, but it is still a top-five offensive line. Saquon's job has never been easier. And Jalen Hurts is a – let's put it as, as politely as we can, a significant upgrade from the quarterback play that Saquon has had during his time in New York. You like it, love it, or, or don't understand it? Greeny, I love it. I agree with what Dan said. The Philadelphia Eagles last year were hey. number one in terms of offensive line before yards, before contact. So from a fantasy standpoint, I think Saquon hmm. Barkley will be the number one player heading into the fall. And if you're Jalen Hurts, you ran the ball 491 times over the last three years. Number one in the NFL from a quarterback perspective. Got that from Hembo. You're going to make Jalen Hurts a lot healthier. Plus, what he can do in the passing game. He had 41 yeah. catches a year ago, Greeny. And this whole dogma about not paying quarterbacks. I To pay this guy 4.7% of the salary cap, it's a no-brainer. Just for context, Gabe Davis is getting more on the average per year. Nothing wrong with Gabe Davis. I'd rather have Saquon Barkley. And when you can get a tough, productive, high-character player from your competitor, the Giants may not say today, but I've been in that building when that happens. It stings. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, pendulums swing, and every once in a while they go a little bit too far, as maybe they did with the running backs. It starts to come back. Now, the Eagles made two flashy mm -hmm. moves yesterday. They signed Saquon mm -hmm. for what is, by running back standards, a lot of money. They also signed Bryce Huff a very good pass rush specialist from the Jets, for what was also big money. A lot of people say, oh, my goodness, they just won the division. A lot of people are a little more hesitant on those moves. <laughs> Where's Dan Graziano? 
a little more hesitant on those moves. I, I think, you know, Saquon Barkley, you say he's going to make Jalen Hurts healthier. Is he going to make Saquon Barkley healthier? I mean, this guy's had two fully healthy seasons out of six, and that's one of the reasons the Giants didn't feel comfortable paying him at this level. Now, the Eagles see a player, and all Mike T's points, right? Like, we, he'll be better for us. He will be a difference-making player for us. That's why it's worth paying him uh, because we're paying him as a difference maker, not as a running back. And if they're right, and look, Howie Roseman, I mean, he's as good at this as anybody, uh, they may be right. But to me, it's a lot to pay. They had to do it. There were other teams in on it. Houston, in my understanding, was competitive, uh, and the Eagles had to top their offer in order to get him. Uh, so if they wanted this player, which they clearly did, they had to do it. But for me, I just feel like I, I, I liked the Giants' day better than I liked the Eagles' day. Remind everyone what they did. I like huh? the trade for Brian Burns, uh, an elite pass rusher from Carolina. Obviously, they paid a lot uh, to get him and to sign him. Uh, they signed a couple of interior offensive linemen that not flashy moves, but but critical ones. They signed a running back at their price, who they liked, Devin Singletary, who played for these guys when they were in Buffalo. I, I, I think the Giants had a very sort of quietly very good day, and I know I'm sure Giants ownership is sick about losing Saquon Barkley to a division rival. I'm sure of that. But they have faith in their front office, and they believe that they made the right decision in terms of not stretching Right, and if indeed they are sick, they had the medicine in front of them all, this all these years, and they chose not to right. take it. They could have locked up Saquon. The Giants and the Eagles are obviously in two different time frames. Right. I, I honestly believe, and Mike T, you know this better, that the Philadelphia 100%. Eagles are still a Super Bowl contender. So that's why you go and maybe – overly aggressive, go get a Saquon Barkley because he's a transformative talent. We've seen Saquon be good in really, really, really bad situations. I'm just telling everybody, it's never been this easy. Just think of what Christian McCaffrey's impact was in San Francisco. And everyone's awesome. like, well, he was really good in Carolina. Well, he's even better in San Francisco because right. his job is easier. Saquon is going to be significantly better in Philadelphia because his job is going to be easier. So is Jalen Hurts's. So is Goddard's and Devontae's and AJ. So this is a transformative move, and, and we haven't kind of felt the gravity of it. I also agree the Giants had a really good day. They let their the face of their franchise go as well. Like it, th yeah. that could be true. He he's but been never, but their guy. Right, but to your point though, Dan, like like they never did any winning with Saquon. Like they, they are the True. Giants are at a different part of their of their you're absolutely right. Their their perspective is different from Philadelphia's. I, I feel like I've been anti Saquon since the day he was drafted. I'm not. I think he's a wonderful player. I just think he's always been overpriced yeah, since I, he got into the NFL. Right, and, and again, I I don't when you consider again, it's a, roughly about four percent of your cap. And again, we're burying the lead here, guys. The big winner is Jalen Hurts. Like towards the end of the season, he was a diminished player. He was banged up. And when you can give the ball to Saquon Barkley and take some of those reps off of Jalen Hurts and he could be healthier, coming down the stretch, that could be a meaningful difference. I would also like to address my, my, my next comments directly to the coordinating producer of this show, John Fink, otherwise known as Stick It In Your Pipe Fink, <laughs> who's one of these angry giant fans that I were all saw. over the place He's yesterday. Miserable. Being Always voiced, angry. being voiced uh, by, by, I think, tongue in cheekly by Tiki Barber yesterday. <laughs> but the, if you're a Giant fan and you're mad at Saquon Barkley, I don't know what to tell you. This is a guy who begged the Giants to meet him, not even halfway, a third of the way, a quarter of the way at any point, and allow him to be a Giant for life and to be the franchise face for the rest of his career. They chose not to do it. I'm not sitting here telling you it was the wrong thing to do. I understand the way people value running I backs. But I, 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 <laughs> Dan, well, well, here's the point, Dan. I'm damn sure not saying that Saquon did anything wrong yesterday by going to a division rival or anybody else who was willing to pay him the most money. Now, the, the Tiki Barber stuff, I think, for those of you who didn't see it, so Tiki Barber, longtime giant, obviously, hosts a talk show in New York now on the radio. And, and after the Saquon's signing was announced by Shefty yesterday, he said something on the air. Again, he says it was tongue-in-cheek, and it certainly appeared to be tongue-in-cheek. Goodbye, Saquon, you're dead to me now. So, something like that. I think he was kidding. I, I don't know this, but, I mean, we've all had that happen, right? I sure. mean, Shefty, no one knows better than Shefty. If he <laughs> speculates about something on the air for one second, the next thing you know, like every single Twitter, oh, Adam Schefter is saying this. So Tiki said, you're dead to us, Saquon. I'm going to take him at, at, at his word that he was kidding around. 
I'm telling you who didn't think he was kidding around was Saquon Barkley. Let me read you Saquon's responses to Tiki on X. He tweeted, lol, uh, you know, LOL. Yup, you're the prime example of loyalty to a team. I got the deal I wanted, secured more guaranteed money, which wasn't given to me before. So if fans are going to hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates and always had theirs. You've been a hater since I got to New York and all the dead to me talk. Don't smile in my face when you see me. So Saquon... <laughs> So, so Tiki may have been kidding. Saquon was not. Uh, Shefty, how should one respond to that? Well, I think Saquon's right. If we go back to last summer when he was the Giants franchise player, he was the one that came in as training camp was open without any real meaningful adjustments on that deal. He could have played it out longer. He could have sat on the sidelines and waited. He didn't. And the reason he came back was because, as he said, he wanted to be there for his teammates and he couldn't bear the idea of missing any part of training camp. So he gave in last year. He hasn't missed out on any time. He's been there for his team, and that's exactly right. This is free agency. This is what it's about. Saquon Barkley hadn't had the chance until yesterday to become a true unrestricted free agent to cash in the way that he wanted. And when he did, Philadelphia stepped up right away and said, we want you and we're going to pay you at this level that you haven't been paid at before. And of course, he has to do that. That's the right thing to do. It wasn't about loyalty. It was about being smart, sane, logical. It's exactly what he did yesterday. He's been there before for the Giants. And when it mattered to him, as it should have, he went and took the right offer. And the bottom line of it, and we'll just move on from this quickly because there's so much more to get to, but yes, a, a, a year ago, basically this week, the Giants chose Daniel Jones over him, right? I mean, that, that, that was, was the, the decision mistake. that was made, right? What Dan Orlovsky, go ahead, put, put, give me 30 seconds. And that was the mistake, Greeny. You mentioning before when you were like, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say it was a mistake. That was when they made the moment of mistake, when they said, we're going to pay Daniel Jones 80-plus million dollars over two years and we're going to choose to not pay the best player on our football team, the guy who's been the face of our franchise, and the person who has publicly never bashed Daniel Jones, even though his play didn't amount to anything in a positive fashion on a consistent basis. That's when they made the mistake choosing to pay Daniel over Saquon.